folks this is Meredith from the papery craftery and today I am sharing a super quick super duper easy probably the easiest craft I've ever done on this channel we're going to be making two different types of quilling paper acorns the first one I'm going to be sharing is using these real acorn caps I just collected these on a walk around my neighborhood and I cleaned them up real good with some water with a little bit of bleach in it and let them dry and then they are ready to go. I'm gonna be using quilling paper, of course. Any colors you choose to use are your choice. I'm gonna be using this uh, light blue here. I also have some pumpkin I like and a deep yellow. And then this really fun copper, kind of shimmery color. This is an old uh, Lake City Craft, it's now Craft Harbor. I can't find this on their website anymore. Uh, so if you're watching Craft Harbor, please bring back the copper paper. It's one of my favorites. I love it. You can use any quilling tool you wish. You can use a needle, a savvy slotted, a regular slotted, or an automatic quilling tool. And if you have a work board, you can cover that with some wax paper for a work surface. And also you're going to need a little paintbrush and tweezers. And I'm going to be using some Elmer's glue and then also some tacky glue to attach my paper to my acorn caps. Like I said, we're gonna be using these real acorn caps as the cap of our acorns. Makes sense, right? So notice that the acorn cap kind of has like an indent. We're going to be making a little quilling paper dome and setting it right inside there. So the paper is kind of acting like the nut of the acorn. Like I said, super simple, but it turns out really cute. I'm gonna be using the light blue paper, and this is a Quilled Creations light blue. And I already know that one strip of this paper, this is 17 inches, I know that one strip isn't gonna be long enough to fill that cap and make the acorn. So I'm gluing two pieces end to end. Your acorns could be any number of sizes. I have made these hundreds of times so I know how big my acorns are. If I didn't, I would use one and put that on my needle tool just like I'm doing now, roll it up end to end, take it off my tool and measure it inside my cap. In order not to waste your time, and I already know that, I'm going to be doing these two strips and like I said, gluing them end to end and rolling them on my tool. I'm using the uh, savvy slotted tool from Quilt Creations here. Again, any tool you like, it will not matter for this project. Once I have my strips totally rolled, I'm going to put a dab of glue on the end and secure that. So we just have a really big tight coil right now. Take that off my tool and now I'm going to take that acorn cap that I showed earlier and I'm going to measure it inside. And I have a tiny, tiny space around parts of it, but on one side it's really snug. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this size as it is. I'm not gonna add any more paper to it. But let me see if I can demonstrate what I would do. If let's say this had a lot more room, I would take another strip and line it up right where I'm pointing, right where my last strip ended, roll a bit, measure it again and see if it was snug in there. It doesn't have to be super perfect because these acorn caps aren't totally around, but we don't want it kind of rattling around in there. Then all you have to do is just use your fingers and gently push the inside to make a very gentle dome. If it can be a little bit flat on the bottom even, that's kind of what you're going for. If you wanna go even one step further, this is optional, and have a tiny, tiny point at the bottom of your dome, you can take a needle tool or some tweezers and gently just push out the very, very center of your acorn. Mine started going a little bit larger than I wanted here. So I'm gonna push that back in just slightly. I just want the very center to come out to a tiny point. You can use tweezers for that as well, if that is easy for you. 
But again, that part's optional. If it makes you feel a little nervous to do that, don't do it. Nobody's going to notice. And then to keep that shape, you're going to put some white glue on the inside, brush it all out so it's smooth, and set that aside on some wax paper to dry. While I was waiting for that blue acorn to dry, I wanted to show this yellow that I had already done has a little bit more of that point on the end that I was talking about before. And this one's already ready to go, so I'm going to use some tacky glue to put around the end of this acorn and put it inside the acorn cap. Just a little bit in a circle. And again, this is the easiest project ever, right inside the acorn cap. Easy peasy. And just adorable. Just a little fall decoration to bring a little bit of nature inside. Super simple. And I just wanted to show some other colors. There's another blue that I had made. I don't know what it is about that light blue. I think it's just a fun change up for the fall. A little bit of a light green. And then this is my favorite again, that copper color. I just think it's really pretty to have a little bit of a sheen in here with these acorns. Now for the second version of these acorns, it's really just to show what you could do if you don't have acorn caps. You don't live in an area with oak trees or whatever the case might be, like the idea of making it all yourself, go for it. This is a light top paper from uh, Craft Harbor. And this paper is the long one. So this is about 22, 24 inches long. We're gonna rip off both ends of two strips and glue them end to end. And I found that that makes pretty much the perfect acorn cap size. They're gonna be more or less the same size as the other ones I made. Again, make them larger, make them smaller. Totally up to you. This is pretty much the same exact process of making the acorn nuts that we just made, but with a very slight variation to the, the doming at the end. And this time I decided I would use my automatic quilling tool. Uh, I do have a video on asking the question, do you really need an automatic quilling tool? I use mine every once in a while. Um, I'll link to that down below in case you want to see my thoughts on the good and the bad about an automatic quilling tool. Anyway, so I glued those two strips together, rolled them up all the way to the end, added some glue, and pressed that down to seal. And now we're going to, just like before, push the inside out a little bit but instead of having it kind of in a smooth dome that goes continuously all the way around, you want kind of a lip, just like the other one. So you sort of have to push the inside, and then if those first few rings keep going, push them back down to make them a little flat again. And this time I really would recommend, I know it's scary, but using a small tool to push a tiny, tiny little point out of the center and that's really going to give it that acorn look because these caps you know do attach themselves to the branch and that is how they do so so you might really want to stretch it and put that little point on there after you're happy with the shape go ahead and grab some glue put it all over the inside and brush that out and that is your little paper acorn cap And then you would do the bottoms just like you did the bottom with a real acorn cap. This is actually the blue one that I had rolled in the beginning. Just put some tacky glue in there and attach them. I have a couple that are already dried. I think they look pretty cute. They really look surprised like acorns. And there you go. So there's a real one and then a paper next to each other. So this is your choice. Make them both, make one or the other, whatever you feel inspired by. And then one more thing, because I can't stop myself. I decided to add a little bit of glitter to the top just to see 
another option to kind of jazz these up even more. I'm sure somebody would want to have those. This just, I put a little bit of glitter glue and then some sprinkle glitter and then a little bit more glitter glue. So they are a little on the messy side. Um, probably just would have not done the sprinkle glitter and just done the glitter glue or mixed them together before I applied them. Would have been a better way to go, but here is a whole bunch of different quilling paper acorns. I love these just in a little bowl or you could scatter them along a table or include them in a centerpiece or a tear tray. I'm sure you'll come up with other ideas about how to use these little baby acorns. If you have any questions, as always, leave those down below. I will link to any other videos and supplies that you will need. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find out as soon as I post my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.